Greetings to the brethren. So I have a shorter video for you guys today that I think applies to a lot of the brethren, to a type of suffering that a lot of the brethren are going through right now. And I had a conversation last night with the Lord and immediately the Lord put it on my heart that a lot of people need to hear this. Uh, so I'll share what it was. So to preface this, let me explain something that I've realized about the Lord since I've been getting to know him better, since I was saved about a year and a half ago, and the Lord and I have had a lot of conversations, and I've been learning about the Lord, and I'll share something with you about him, which is that the Lord cares so much about the deep things of our heart. You know, as human beings, we tend to judge people based on how they're dressed, uh, outer habits, you know, uh external things that we can see. But the Lord is not limited in sight as we are. The Lord sees all of your thoughts. He sees the deep things of your heart. He sees very differently from how men see. And something that I've learned a lot about the Lord is, whereas men care a lot about, you know, do you dress a certain way? Do you speak a certain way? Do you have some external habit or not? That stuff is not so important to the Lord as the deep beliefs and feelings deep within our hearts. And a simple example of this is that the Lord lets you into heaven or not, not based on what you do, but based on what you believe. Notice that, that those who enter heaven, enter heaven because they believe the gospel, which is that, you know, was it 1 Corinthians 15, that Christ died for our sins, that he was buried and he rose on the third day according to the scriptures. Notice that of all the criteria the Lord could have picked for salvation, I mean, look, if it was a human and we had to decide what it was that let someone into heaven or hell, we'd probably be something that they did, like, you got to do this. And that's, that's what the whole law was. But as we know, the law was merely a school teacher to bring us to faith in Christ. And that's what the Lord uses to determine if you're either going to go to hell and be tormented for eternity or if you're going to go to heaven and have incredible bliss with the Lord for eternity, he judges you ultimately based on a belief. If while you're alive on this earth, you choose to believe the gospel, what Paul calls my gospel that he says the whole earth will be judged by, isn't it interesting how the Lord determines that based on a belief, not based on an outer type of thing? So that's something that I've learned about the Lord is that he cares a lot about the deep things of our heart, our deep feelings, our deep beliefs, very, very important to the Lord. In many ways, he sees that first and foremost, almost like the opposite of how a human sees. We see things like how someone's dressed, how they speak, stuff like that. The Lord sees it inside out. He sees the deep things of the heart. Um, and that's what he really uh, cares about, you know, and also the deep things of the heart. You know, you might have a passing thought. You might feel irritated at something that happens, but the Lord can tell the difference between if it's just like a, like say you're normally like a kind person and you love people, but one day you get kind of irritated with someone. The Lord can tell the difference between if it's just more of a passing surface thing versus if it's like a real deep bitterness in your heart. He can see the difference. So anyway... With that being said, last night, just, just randomly, before I went to bed, I thought, you know, maybe maybe I'll ask the Lord something. So one of the ways that I talk to the Lord is by casting the lot, literally just by flipping a coin. Now, that's a whole separate subject. It's in the scripture. You know, the lot is cast into the lap, but it's every decision is from the Lord. Won't go into that. But anyway, I decided to ask the Lord before I went to bed. I said, Lord, would you be willing to show me with the lot uh, if the... What if there's something I could do in my inner heart that I could change that would please you, that would please you more? And I asked the Lord of the law, and he says, yes, so I will. I am willing to show you that. So I'm like, oh, cool, awesome. Let's figure out what it is. So I'm like, okay, well, it could be a lot of things. So I'm like, okay, let, let's narrow it down. So I'm like, Lord, is it that you would like to see me increase something in my heart? Like, like you know, a, a thought or an emotion or would you like me to increase something more or would you like me to decrease something, take something away, make it less? Lord tells me decrease. So I'm like, okay, what could it be? So I start going through with the lot. I'm like, is it, you know, pride because of this? The Lord's like, no, 
I'm like, okay, is it, uh, is it some kind of judgment? I'm like judging somebody or something like that. Lord's like, no, I'm like, okay. Is it that I have too much fear of like certain people? Like my landlady's always criticizing me. Is it, is it that? The Lord's like, no. I'm like, okay. Is it, uh, do you want me to get rid of, do I have some kind of greed about something? Like Lord's like, no. So, dude, I must've gone through seven or eight things. The Lord keeps being like, no, 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 no. So I'm, I'm like, I'm like, Lord, this one's getting challenging. I'm like, I'm looking for everything. I'm like, what am I supposed to decrease? What is it that the Lord wants to see less of? And I'm like, you're really stumping me here, Lord. I'm kind of laughing. I'm like, Lord, I'm trying them all. It's not, it's not pride. Uh, it's not greed. I'm like, Lord, is it that I search too much trying to get dopamine through outer things like energy drink and cigarettes and stuff? He's like, nope, it's not that. And I'm like, oh, what is it, Lord? You're stumping me here. And so I'm like, okay, Holy Spirit, come on, show me Holy Spirit. I'm praying. I'm like, Holy Spirit, reveal to me in my heart. What is it that the Lord wants me to decrease? And I sit there in a moment for silence and immediately I began to cry because I instantly realized what it was. And I said it out loud. I cast the lot. Lord says, yes, that's what it is. And you know what it was? It was the feeling that I wasn't good enough. So ever since I, I was a young child, just grab my coffee. Ever since I was a young kid, I always struggled with a feeling like I wasn't good enough, like there was something wrong with me. And it affected every area of my life, you know. When I played guitar, I spent years playing hours a day. I would always feel like I just, I'm just not good enough and I'd make a mistake in a concert and I would just feel like I'm just not a good enough guitarist and I would play more hours and my teacher would be saying, Evan, you're doing great, just keep it up. And I just wouldn't feel like I was good enough, you know. When it came to like women, you know, even as I became a pickup artist and committed all these terrible sins of fornication, which at the time I didn't even know were sins. I thought I was just trying to be a man and stuff. Even when I was with many, many women, I would still feel like I'm not, I'm not good enough at picking up women. And I would, you know, feel bad about it. Even when I had tons of women, you know, or like I'd go to the gym and get new records with the bench press. And I'd feel like I'd look in the mirror and feel like, man, I'm just not strong enough. And like, this thought pretty much affected every area of my life. And it was like, no matter how hard I would try at something, I would just always have this feeling like I'm just not good enough. And I don't know where it came from. And I would talk to my psychologist about it. And I would talk to, to, to my uh, sponsor in AA. I used to be an Alcoholics Anonymous, which, you know, definitely don't join that. That's a twisted heretical group where they have you construct an idol. And, you know, and my sponsor pointed out, he's like, Evan, it's like, you think you're never good enough. And my psychologist pointed it out too. He's like, Evan, it seems like you never feel like you're good enough. You know, my guitar teacher is like, Evan, I'm telling you, you're playing guitar well. How come you're not believing me? I'm your teacher. I know. Like, you know but I could just never get rid of that thought, you know? And last night, you know, the Holy Spirit put it on my heart and I realized that. And I realized, you know, I still struggle with that feeling a lot, like a feeling like I'm just not good enough. Like even when I'm trying so hard and doing everything I can, like I'm just not good enough. And it seems to affect everything, you know? And I realized after the Lord put it on my heart and then he confirmed it with the law, I realized why the Lord really doesn't like that feeling because it's a very unbiblical feeling. It's completely against the Bible. And let me explain why. I'm just going to read a single quote, which is this. Okay, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So this is talking about Jesus. This is the crucial thing that happened on the cross. Now, a lot of times people miss it, that it was actually a transaction or an exchange. Because you ask people, what did Jesus do for you on the cross? And say, oh, he paid for my sins. And he did. But it's actually a transaction. If that's only half of what happened. Yes, Jesus did pay for all your sins. But he also imputed his righteousness unto you, unto any that believe. Meaning that if you're a born again believer, not only are your sins forgiven, but you now bear with you the righteousness of Christ, as it said, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 
because Jesus lived a sinless life. He literally lived a perfect life. And on that moment, when he took the wrath of God on the cross and he said, I will pay the debt of all the sinners that will believe on me, not only were our debts forgiven, but his righteousness was transferred to our accounts, so to speak. That's why we can let our light shine before men. That's why we can be the salt of the earth, because we have the righteousness of Christ, something that we didn't earn. It's not based on our performance. It's based on Jesus's performance, the fact that he lived a sinless life. The best analogy I can think of would be like if you could switch bank accounts with someone. Now, I don't think you can do this, but imagine like you have a bank account and you look at your balance and it's like negative $683. Like you owe the bank money and they start sending you notices like you got to pay us this money. You know, like you're negative, you know, we're going to charge you interest, whatever. But imagine there's somebody else who in their account, they have like $1.6 million. And imagine they came to you and they're like, I'll switch accounts with you. Imagine if you could do that at the bank. It's like you go to the bank. They're like, I'm going to switch my account over into your name. And I'm going to have your account transferred to my name. We're literally going to switch accounts. So not only would you no longer have that negative balance of negative $500 or whatever, you would now have $1.6 million because it was a switch. It went both ways. So we have with us the righteousness of Christ, not based on what we do, you know, not based on works of righteousness we have done, but by the grace of God, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And that's why if you have a persistent feeling like I'm just not good enough, that's an unbiblical feeling because you are good enough because you have imputed to you the righteousness of Christ. And that occurs at the moment of salvation. The moment that you believe the gospel deep in your heart an exchange takes place, your name is written to the book of life. All of your sins are paid for by Jesus but all of Jesus' righteousness is then imputed unto you, right? Your faith is counted as righteousness. And so that's why if you have persistent feelings like, oh, I'm just not good enough, I have this sin, realize that your goodness comes from the goodness of Christ. You have that with you. You have that imputed unto you. That's been credited to your account and nothing can ever take it away because it's not based on you. It's based on the fact that Jesus never sinned and that's never going to change. And so that's why if you're stuck with this feeling, which it's probably driven by demons, I don't know why I had it so much in my life. It's probably demons trying to get you to feel condemned because really they're the ones that are condemned, but they try to get us to feel like we are. So what I would encourage you is if you're feeling that, if you're feeling that you're not good enough, you know, because you commit some sin or you have some failing, well, first of all, join the club. We all did. Paul did. Paul, the great, you know, apostle who did all this amazing stuff. He said, oh, wretched man that I am, you know, that which I should do, I don't do. That which I shouldn't do, I do. Oh, who will save me from the body of this death? The Lord Jesus Christ, right? And then Paul ends up saying, thus, I'm going to glory in my infirmities. So that what? So that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So what I'm telling you is, if you're a believer, if you're saved, if you believe that simple gospel, then you are good enough because Jesus was good enough and he exchanged the debts. He switched the accounts. So you are good enough, not because of your performance, not because of this or because of that. You know, that stuff still matters. You're still going to get rewarded in heaven for your good works you know, and your, your sins, you know, are going to be like burned away as through fire, you know, but you're not going to be kept out of heaven through any of your sins because Jesus bl bl blood paid for all that. But it's important for you to know that even on the earth, you are good enough because of Christ. And that's what should give you power to testify. That's what should make you the salt of the earth, the light of the world. That's the light that you're shining before men. Not my own light, not that I'm a sinless one, not that it's not me, it's Christ in me. That's what I'm trying to shine forward. That's what I believe. That's what's written in the word. And that's what we can shine to people is show people 
that what they're seeing in us is not actually us. It's actually the light of Jesus Christ. It's his righteousness, and we have it because he willingly laid his life down. No one took his life from him. He laid it down. He went to the cross and did this deal with God the Father where he said, Father, put all their sins upon me and I will bear that. But the other half is, let my righteousness, let my sinless life be credited to them. And that's how we all get into heaven. And we have that not just when we die and get into heaven, we have it even now. Now, it doesn't mean that we don't, you know, still commit sins. I mean, actually, technically, what is born of God cannot sin. The new man within us doesn't sin. It's the old man in the flesh which sins, which explains, you know, John's statements that that which is born of God cannot sin because his seed remaineth in him. That's the new man. That's the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. And that's the spiritual circumcision, which separates the new man from the old man, which is our flesh, which we still wrestle with and we have to work at daily. And, you know, and if we say there's no sin in us, then the truth is not in us when we deceive ourselves. But the point is, regardless of how your walk with Christ is going, whether you feel like it's going great or not so great or whatever, the point is, the moment you believe the gospel, you had the righteousness of Christ imputed unto you. You believed God and it was accounted to you for righteousness and it's based on Jesus' sinless life and nothing can take it away. That's why the scripture clearly says that whoever believes in Jesus believes on the Son, will never come into condemnation, will never perish. That's why John says, I write this to you so that you will know that you have eternal life. You have it already. You already have the righteousness of Christ, and it's not based on you. Now, certainly, go out, do good works, avoid sins. That's great. <laughs> you know, you'll get rewarded for all those good works. That's great. And definitely fight against sins. You know, sins aren't our friend. We fall into him all the time. It's, it's part of being a, a Christian. But the point is, you are good enough because Jesus was good enough. I'll read the scripture again. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So the scripture itself testifies that we have been made the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. So my friend, Whoever you are, wherever you are in your walk, whatever demons you're battling, whatever your own assessment of your life is, know that you are good enough because you carry in you the righteousness of Christ. And that is not something that can ever be taken away. The devil can't take it away. No one can pluck you out of the hand of God. The ones the Father has given to Jesus, he will not lose a single one because none are greater than the Father. So my friend, Yes, you are good enough. So don't let those demons get you down. Pick yourself up. Keep doing the best you can with stuff, but know that whatever happens, you are good enough because you bear within you the righteousness of Christ, something that you didn't earn and you don't deserve, but that's okay because that's not how the system works. It's grace that has saved you. It is grace and it is the sinless life of our Lord Jesus and the fact that he willingly chose to lay down that life and bear the wrath of God so that his righteousness could be un imputed unto everyone that believes. And that is the beauty of it all, my friend. So if demons are telling you that you're not good enough, if you're feeling like you're not good enough, it's a demonic lie. You are good enough because Christ was good enough. Christ was the beloved Son of our Lord, in whom our Lord was well pleased. And now that you believe in Christ and are saved, you are covered in the blood of the Lamb, and the Lord now looks upon you and sees you as his precious Son, having the righteousness of Christ. That's how the Lord sees you. And, you know, so do your best you can, you know. Try to avoid sins, but realize we're always going to have them to some extent. But you are good enough. I mean, if you're good enough to get into heaven, then what more can there really be, my friends? Like, go out there, do your good works, earn your heavenly uh, rewards, you know. Try to avoid sins because, you know, they create a lot of drama and they're not our friend. But at the end of the day, know that in your deepest being, your deepest identity, who you are, your identity is in Christ Jesus. And that occurred the moment of your salvation. 
when you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. And on that glorious day when we will be like him and we will receive our glorified bodies and we won't even be capable of sin anymore. Now until then, we're going to have to fight our daily battle and wrestle with it. But never let yourself be deceived into thinking that, oh, because I committed this sin or I didn't do some work or something, oh, I've lost it. Well, guess what? It, it, it was never something that you were holding on to to begin with. It's God holding on to you. It's Christ's sinless life that imputes the righteousness unto you. It's not your own sinlessness, you know? So you are good enough. And I just felt like the Lord put on my heart that I had to share that because I see so many brethren who fall into feeling condemned because they did such and such a, a sin and so on. It's on the blood of Jesus. We're covered in the blood of the lamb. There is no sin so great that it is more powerful than the blood of Jesus. That's why Jesus said, it is finished. What is it? Telestai? I always forget. It's some word in Greek. Telestai or something that means it is finished. It is done. It is over. The moment that Jesus gave up the ghost on that cross, he opened the doorway. And from that moment on, any who believed in him received in them the righteousness of Christ, and it is sealed there with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. And for that reason, we should be rejoicing. We should be rejoicing, and we should be embracing the fruits of the Spirit, love, peace, joy, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, uh, temperance, goodness. Let us walk as victors because we are truly victors in Christ. He won the victory for us, but we get to partake in it because that's just how graceful God is. That's just how awesome God is. And that's just how perfect God's plan was. And that's why the, the cross was the most important event that ever could occur, ever will occur, and ever has occurred. Because that's the moment when not only were our sins paid for, but the righteousness of Christ was imparted onto us. And no, we don't deserve it. But guess what? We have it anyway because gracious is our God, and that's how much he loves us, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should have everlasting life and never perish. So if you're feeling today like you're not good enough, you tell yourself that's a lie. That's a lie from demons. That's a lie that from our own minds, whatever you want to call it, but it is not the truth. The truth is that we are good enough because Christ was good enough, and we now have his righteousness upon us, sealed with the Holy Spirit inside of us, having performed the spiritual circumcision, separating us from the old fleshly nature, which, which has its sins, but it's only temporary, my friends. The moment that either the rapture comes or we pass away and, and we're, we're separated from our body and we're with, with the Lord, uh, and uh, at that point, sin is, is no longer going to be a problem. We will never rebel against God again. And one day when that glorious moment of the rapture comes and we all get our glorified bodies, like then we will be like him, like the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, then we will know him as now we are known, which I'm really looking forward to, and I'm sure you are too. So pick yourself up, uh, spiritual warrior, brother, sister, Pick yourself up and walk with the strong confidence that you bear with you the righteousness of Christ. That is a marvelous thing. And that is what Jesus earned by living his sinless life. Probably the greatest, hardest thing anyone has ever done on the earth. Jesus did in his life. And then he laid his life down and gave it to all of us. Everyone to come who would ever believe. And that, my friends, is the gospel itself. So pick yourself up. You are good enough. Uh, the scripture itself says it. And there's a lot of other verses that say it too. I just picked that one because that's a good example. But I have a whole other video coming where I go deeper into this subject and talk more about how spiritual progress is actually more continual than we realize and why it is that I don't like the term backsliding and why it is that I don't like all these criticisms of the hyper grace, like as if there's all these Christians out there that are just like committing all these sins, but think it's awesome. I mean, my experience, like talking to like over hundreds of 
fellow Christians, since the Lord raised me into the ministry, I've yet to find anyone who's like, yeah, I'm saved. And that's why I just go out and commit sins. And I love it. Like, yeah, I haven't found anyone who has that attitude. I found a ton of people who have the attitude, like feeling really guilty and ashamed because they committed some sin and feeling condemned. And I try to talk to them and raise their spirits. And, you know, so anyway, that's a future video coming about why I don't like the term backsliding and why the spiritual progress in our life is really being driven by God and the Holy Spirit. We see it as like fluctuating, as going up or down, but really God works all things for good. Uh, for those who love him and no good thing will he withhold from from the one who walks uprightly and so really looked back from a perspective it's really just always moving up even our sins even our missteps God actually is using them to teach us and for us to spiritually grow uh, and it's it's our mind and it's demons that are trying to tell us otherwise and get us to feel condemned and get us to feel like we've messed it all up and oh you have this sin blah, 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 and, you know, tell those demons to go away, stand up, and believe in the righteousness of Christ. You don't even have to believe in yourself. Believe in Christ. You have his righteousness. Believe that he lived a sinless life. Believe in his goodness. Believe in his glory. That, my friends, is plenty. You no longer have to, you know, all the stuff today. Believe in yourself. Have faith in yourself. You know what? Have faith in Jesus Christ, because he went to that cross for you. He lived the sinless life, and as a result of him laying his life down and suffering the wrath of God on that cross, you have now been accredited his righteousness. The bank accounts have switched. It's been imputed unto you. So hang your head up high and walk with the strong confidence and faith and boldness, knowing that you bear with you the righteousness of Christ, not through works you have done or through anything we earned, but through the great work of our Lord upon that cross. The Lord likes to see us confident and happy. And so may we let our light shine before men. Let us be the salt of the earth. Let us radiate the peace and the joy of the Holy Spirit. And in this world where everyone's so depressed, everyone's so down, everyone's so worried, you have all the unbelievers who are lost, who are just floating in this abyss. You have all the believers that are getting attacked by demons constantly. I mean, dude, it's happening to everyone. Demons are trying to bring them down. You know what? One of the most radical things you can do in the world right now, if you want to make God happy, is walk around with a smile on your face. <laughs> walk around feeling good, feeling that God is good, that Christ has won the war, that life is good, baby. We are going to be in heaven and even this life, God is working everything for our own good. He's improving every area of our life. He loves us so much. Ignore the stupid demons. They're trying to seem so powerful. They're just like these annoying liars. It's like some guy who just keeps calling you on the phone and telling you you're a loser and everything's going to go terrible. Guess what? Just hang up the phone. Just don't believe the guy. <laughs> like, that's all that the demons really are. They're really just these sniveling worms that just incessantly lie to us and try to make us miserable. But you know what? You got free will. And you can either believe the demons and all their lies of condemnation, or you can believe the scripture, which clearly tells us where Jesus said, you know, whoever believes on me will never come into condemnation, uh, will never perish. Uh, that if you believe on the Son, you have everlasting life. Not that you might have it, or you could have it, or you'll get it eventually if you're good enough. Know that you already have it. That's what John says, right? These things I write unto you who believe in the Son of God, that you may know that you have everlasting life already. We're supposed to know it. So if you want to do something radical in the world today, walk around believing the scriptures. Believe them because they're true. Have a smile on your face. Don't listen to those demons and walk around with the fruits of the Spirit that are love, joy, peace, long-sufferingness, gentleness, goodness, temperance. Radiate those fruits of the Spirit and then without even saying a word, people are going to notice it and they're going to think, why is that dude so happy? And when you talk to him, instead of saying, oh, it's because of this new cryptocurrency or it's because of this ancient secret I learned about materialization or manifestation or all, all this other stuff. It's all lies. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life. So let that radiate from your being. Believe the scripture, have faith, don't listen to those demons, and then go out there into the world and let your light so shine before men that your Father, our Father in heaven, will be glorified. Okay, that's all I have for you today. Hope everyone's doing well, and don't forget, you are good enough because Christ is good enough. 
He is the living God and he is with us. And he loves us so much and his Holy Spirit is always within us. And if you ever want to talk to the Holy Spirit, oh, he's always listening. And he's always got some thoughts to put on your heart. If you're willing to seek out his still quiet voice, he will talk to you. So I just wanted to share that little conversation I had with God. And I'm going to be working on it to apply it to my own life. And I, I hope you apply it to, uh, to your life as well. So much love from Madrid, Spain. Thank you all, everyone, for supporting the channel. Oh, by the way, if you want to get in touch with me, I'm going to put my phone number in the video description. We have a fellowship group of fellow born-again believers where we talk on WhatsApp and, you know, we support one another, we pray for one another, we talk about how our day is going, we share scriptures, we share different stuff we see in our lives. It's just a fellowship group. Anybody's welcome to join. So I'm going to put my phone number in the video description so you can send me a message on WhatsApp and I can invite you to join the group. Or if you just want to talk to me, well, you can just chat with me as well. I will put my email address also in the video description. So if you got a question for me or some thoughts to share, I'm happy to hear. And if you would like to donate to this ministry, I will also put a, a PayPal address that you can send a donation if you would like to donate to the ministry. So I thank you everyone who's contributed to this ministry and, and in all the ways that you have with all of your prayers and your comments and your donations and your messages. And I appreciate it so much. And we're going to keep this ministry going strong, baby, because truth is, it's really just God that does it. That's the beauty of the Christian life. More and more, you realize it's really God doing it. We're just kind of the vessels or the channels, and really, the Lord's the one who's doing the heavy lifting. We just have to be willing to have faith, believe in his word, and he's the really the one getting stuff done. We're just kind of going along for the ride, baby. And that's the beauty of the Christian life, you know? His yoke is easy and his burden's light. Don't listen to those demons telling you otherwise. Walk with the fruit of the Spirit, let your light shine, and let's get out there and win some more souls, feed the fellow sheep, and bring more friends with us into the eternal kingdom of our Father and His blessed righteousness. So, until I see you there, or until the next video, a salute to all the brethren, my fellow spiritual warriors. So, pick your heads up, put a smile on your face, and go out there knowing that the Word of God is true, and... He hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, the Lord Jesus Christ. Bless you, God the Father. Bless you, God the Son, Christ Jesus. Bless you, Holy Spirit. And bless you, everyone who's watched the video. I hope it's been a blessing to you, and I'll speak with you again soon. Amen.